Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Today is June 1st, 2019. And we're doing live streams, uh, again, drop-in tutoring mass session. And this is number 30 that we've done, um, I guess this year. Uh, maybe I might have started at the beginning of the school year. I might have started at that, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, beginning of the year 2019 i can't remember when we started to count but this is uh, live stream number 30 drop in math tutoring session number 30 okay and um, basically it's an open discussion um, talking about uh, you know if i can help you out in mathematics i will uh, if you have any questions hannah how are you doing how's life welcome to another live stream on a saturday morning on a saturday morning very sweet now one thing we're going to do today at the beginning of here i'm gonna be post this up hey chicho i am in a bit of a predicament i would love your opinion in a situation i'm in can you help uh, i'll give you my opinion i don't know if it's going to be a help or not it's not math related for sure hannah uh, we'll wait until i'll do the little intro to what we're going to do first once people start rolling in um what's uh what's the issue here hannah I'll, I'll give you my opinion again I, I can't guarantee you that uh, it's gonna be <laughs> any good advice I've been uh, a coach the last 11 years of my life we went for a goal uh, to win the district championships and develop the kids through a club team cool uh, I really have enjoyed it the last two years and put hundreds of hours into the kids to make them the best they have ever been the kids have developed and excelled nicely but sadly parents have come in and decided they want control of this team and are going to take it all over as an analogy it's like if you build a house from scratch and somebody came in and the text uh, cuts off there i gotta wait until hannah uh, puts it up um, a tough situation and that's uh hannah just uh what you're describing right now is uh, sort of the situation that a lot of people find themselves in when they're working for a corporation the simplest example I could give you oh let me re finish off reading the test because Hannah just posted it as an analogy it's like if you build a house from scratch and somebody came in with a gun and said and, and said get out this is uh, ours now and you were forced to walk away my passion is coaching specifically this level of ball I've won uh, so far 11 years uh, since high school I've won so you've won 11 I've won so for 11 years since high school however I'm discouraged because the team I put together is being stolen by uh, I've done oh okay uh, I've done so far okay yeah that's right I've done I should fill in the blanks myself uh, X how are you doing uh, stolen by me by some douches who uh, has done nothing some parents four of them are going to pull their kids due to this I am discouraged and a bit uh, de uh, depressed I feel unappreciated hey Chicho how's it going brother going good Richard thank you very much 6 p.m. in the UK time perfect awesome awesome good timing um, so Hannah uh, your analogy is not perfect okay because I appreciate what you're saying it, it hurts it's happened to me really it's happened to me I just to give you give you a thing after graduating high school I was playing soccer both in the high school team and um, in a league right same here hello Chicho Martin how are you doing uh, I was also playing in the league right and then we, when we turned 18 the code said okay kids uh, okay guys uh, it's been nice and I'll see you guys hopefully we'll run into each other again and I was like wait a second I want to keep on playing soccer right and the code said well this league that we're in is 18 years or younger right it, if you want to play soccer you're gonna to have to find a men's league to play in which is 19 and over right and I was like well 
what do you mean like i i was connected i knew i know people from all over the place right so i knew people all over where we were in like three different divisions right and i was like well there's a ton of us that want to continue playing soccer how do we do this so he said okay listen i can get you in touch with someone that you guys can form a new league a new uh, club and you can register teams if you can get people coming in so i want to talk to the guy and he was he sounds like a person that you're describing sketchy as you know sketchy and he was very self-centered and power hungry and wanted to control everything right but i didn't care i just wanted to play soccer so i sat down and talked with him and he basically said listen if you can get the numbers if you can get the kids registered then um we'll register the team we'll form a club and register the team and i said okay done deal so i put the word out i said listen i called a few people and during the games i met people hello racer kill i met people and stuff like this and i said listen on this day on a saturday i believe i was going to be in a stadium sitting down and registering people and i told people to bring money bring money bring id everything that we needed right and i didn't know how many people were going to show up and it ended up that tons of people showed up so we had enough we had like 50 people show up or something that wanted to register right play soccer men's league so you know i took down all the names took the money took their ids da, 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 and we went out and formed a team right we were able to not only form one team we registered a club put three teams together the person i talked to took the best players in his mind he took the best players right big soccer game tonight yeah it's the champions league <laughs> uh, he took the best players and then the second best players went with another coach and then i got everybody else and i had some picks as well i had my friends that wanted to play with me and stuff like this and i got the third ranked team we we're lowered in the third place right and we didn't even have a coach i was playing coach I was doing coach and player which i really didn't like so i got burnt a little bit but i didn't care at the time because i wanted to play soccer okay spurs tonight can't wait and uh at the uh, basketball tonight too that's right i think because i think that's the spurs <laughs> i don't even know who's in the champions league tonight um so i think it's tonight anyway so i learned a lesson from that okay the lesson is this it's the same lesson that a lot of comic book creators artists have learned throughout time no come on on liverpool no spurs and time <laughs> discussion going. so this is the lesson that a lot of creators uh, and not just artists but also scientists that work for pharmaceutical companies or whatever technology companies or whatever it is right if it's not your company okay then you whatever work you put in is per hire and or for your case volunteer which was my case as well it was volunteering i wasn't getting paid to do this soccer thing right and you don't own that right so the analogy that you're using is like building a house and then having people to come in with a gun to kick you out is flawed the flaw is this you build a house on somebody else's property okay so you don't technically own the house because you don't own the property this person that's forcing their way into you to kick you out is a piece of crap right they've seen an opportunity they want power and who knows what's going through their heads right and they want control like you said right but that's the nature of the beast right now because you're dealing with parents and their kids and it's not a club that you formed yourself right I, I assume you don't you're not the registered owner of the club or the team okay so somebody must be uh, the registered person for the team which I'm assuming it might be a collective of the parents so lesson learned would be this uh, you're 100% correct Joe. I don't own it yeah one and this is a lesson that you can carry with you forever really it i've learned it myself as well right and that's the reason i do what i do and the way i do it okay 
and the way I would live my life and whatnot. Because I've come across, uh, you, and I'm, and I'm, I'm just gonna say this straight up. Uh, majority of people in this world are beautiful, brilliant. They will lend you a hand when they can. They will help you out. They will, they were they will give you advice. They were, they will hear, uh, hear you. They will listen to you, right? They are kind people. However, there's a handful of people out there in every community there are pieces of shit okay that will take advantage because they're either psychopaths or sociopaths or they've been abused when they were children or they were been abused period they've gone through hard times and the only way they can interact with the world is to abuse other people or take advantage of other people okay learn to recognize those people so look at the person that's doing this to you and highlight some of the traits that they have right some of the traits that they have might be fast talker right sales uh, you know I'm not trashing salespeople I'm a really good salesperson myself I've done some sales in the past but they come at you like a generic uh, used car salesperson they're ba -ba 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 -ba, and they want things done rapidly okay and they have a posse that come after you or you know lackeys that enforce their their power uh backstabbers are everywhere these days false charm false charm false charm martin 100 percent, and they're called backstabbers basically right i've come across a few of them and it's happened to me right so i've recognized the traits now and it's not something that i can pinpoint to one thing it's a combination of things right so don't get angry don't get depressed don't get don't get disappointed this guy cannot have a, a constructive conversation if you disagree with him he escalates the aggression yeah those are some of the people 100 percent right that's one of the traits they take it personally they think it's a personal attack and for them to keep their status in their community they think the only thing they can do is crush you crush the competition right they're a perfect example of our current education system what it what it breeds right which is competition and and aggression okay hello chicho hello gentle chaos how are you doing we're dealing uh, we're talking about something right now gentle chaos oh my goodness the math on the spiral problem is in, it is intense gentle chaos the problem you presented oh exhausting i don't have a solution for you but i'm gonna lay out the problem okay and I'm going to give you my perspective and some of the things I encountered, which is basically what I mentioned, but it's it's exhausting. <laughs> really, it's exhausting. <laughs> he doesn't work. He is a stay at home dad who can't work in society. Then this this is what you can do, Hannah. This is what I would do. OK, so all of that stuff said. Personally, this is what I would do. OK, now I don't know. Um, I forget how old you are and uh, you've been doing this for 11 years so you must be at least in your late 20s or early 30s or something like this right or mid 20s or something okay this is what I would do if I really wanted to pursue this if I really wanted to keep control of the team I'm almost 25 okay take a look at this Anna. and by the way I did all that soccer stuff when I was like 19 20 right just a pup didn't know I knew there was bad people around but when you're a teenager kids you deal with those types of people it's a different way than when you deal with grown-ups like the person I was talking to this this father this guy who was in coaching and who was you know carrying himself really high he was like in his 40s right so I was just a Joe schmuck like I was I was a guy you could control right and again I don't hold anything against him I'm still I haven't seen him for like 30 years right uh, but um, I would still talk to him and say hi I don't hold any ill will against them I just learned what I needed to learn from that experience right but this is what I would do if I really wanted to continue coaching and I had a good relationship with a lot of the parents and a lot of the kids I would go into the club there must be a centralized uh, what do you call it committee that has clubs 
that manages all these clubs and sets up all the games and stuff, I would go to them and figure out how I can register a team. Okay, so get all the paperwork. Okay, figure out what loops you have to jump through. Okay, sit down and think about what it's going to take to do this, right? And then if you really want to continue coaching and you want to have control of the team, right? Right now is the perfect time to do it. Approach every kid and well, don't approach the kids yet. Okay, first order of contact should be through the parents, right? If you're dealing with 19 and over or 18 over, whatever is considered adult, you could talk to them directly, right? I just talked to, when I did this, I talked to my friends. I didn't go to the parents to say, we're gonna do this, right? Because I was their age, right? Three, one Liverpool tonight, Martin. Do you have money on it? What's the odds? I don't even know the odds. Um, so approach the parents and contact the parents. I'm assuming you have contacts of all the parents. Contact the parents and say, listen, uh, and don't go in there with emotion, right? Don't go in there with anger. Approach them and lay it out straight out what you want to do. What you want to do is this is you've been coaching for a long time and you have a lot invested in coaching in in this type of lifestyle because you love it okay and right now there's a little bit of conflict occurring in the relationship of the way you're managing the team and the way some of the parents want to manage the team or have control of the team and because you haven't registered this team you don't have control over this whoever has control over this has control over this okay and they want to take that control away from you and that means you can't coach to the best of your abilities okay so what you're deciding to do is to register a new team okay where all this politics will not come into play it will not affect and really emphasize this that you don't want the kids to be exposed to the politics of the game and of the parents right you want to create a safe space a good environment for the kids to play a game to appreciate what the game is and you want to instill in them the what do you call it uh, the gamesmanship uh, there's awards that are given for this uh, uh, sportsmanship right you want to instill in them sportsmanship dedication and list out what you want the way you coach right and approach all the parents with this pitch because this is a pitch you're telling them to trust you and you have a pretty good track record 11 years right you're asking them not telling them asking them to trust you to be able to form a team and manage that team the way you have done over the last 11 years without the politics of the parents interfering in the game and affecting the children and if they would be willing to register with you if they are go through the hoop go run through the whatever it is that you need to run through okay fill out the things get people registered get the down payment from them because it costs money to register these teams get the down payment from them okay get all the names whatever you need to do and register your team okay and let every parent that you're involved with with their kids with this team know that you're doing this okay including the guy who's trying to muscle his way into this team that you've created this atmosphere this community really that you've created right this is what you're doing but first contact all the parents okay and contact him last maybe right but don't take too long don't take a week to do this okay do it within two days three days because the word of mouth will go out right and at the same time put the word out to people you know that are playing games in other places other teams that you might have enough room to bring in other players okay now don't make promises uh, make sure you fill the spots with the team with the kids in your team and if you need additional players then put the word out that you need additional players right so it takes it's going to take a little bit of maneuvering on your part 
okay and it's going to take a little bit of work but once you lay the foundation properly that you're in control this is your team and you will not allow politics to interfere with the game if it if it's not the ideal team that you want at first it will turn into the ideal team that you want in the future okay the ideal and there's going to be mistakes you're going to make mistakes and if you fail in your first attempt at doing this you don't get enough players wanting to sign up with you and you can't find additional players that can join the team to have a minimum number of players that you need to register this team because you need a minimum number of players to register a team okay do it again next year but start out earlier and let the word out okay so that's one thing you can do Hannah uh, that's the way I would approach it if I really wanted to do it okay I hope that helps and I hope you don't get burned taking my advice if you do I my apologies I don't take responsibility okay take every bit of advice you get from anyone with a grain of salt and realize that advice is not someone putting a gun to your head forcing you to do something which is something that I've seen a lot of people do they don't own their actions right and I've been a I've been at fault at this as well in the past you know I've taken someone else's advice and done what they said without doing the research and the legwork trusting them and I get burned and I go oh I got burned because of that person no I didn't get burned because of that person I got burned because of me the decision I made and what I didn't uh, the research I didn't do I hope that helps Hannah Chicho how's my favorite person doing <laughs> doing great spider <laughs> besides my wife for sure and I'm assuming you have no kids <laughs> I hope your kids are some of your favorite people I, I hope so anyway I hope so anyway right uh, how's everyone doing I hope you're doing well um, we're gonna do mathematics today 20 to 1 for results really hold on a second Liver who's Liverpool playing against this is the finals isn't it my pleasure Hannah Liverpool final oh three to one is 20 to one odds okay okay three to one is 20 to one odds so I'm assuming Liverpool's a fate hold on a second if three to one is 20 to one odds for Liverpool then I don't know who they're playing I have to say that uh otherwise my wife would kill me <laughs> no kiss yet going to adopt some so, ah nice man you're gonna adopt some awesome man I hope you give me well you will if you you've been around for a while spider I'm assuming you're gonna provide him a fantastic home fantastic home uh, aside from that aside from Champions League and uh, politics and sports and stuff like this that's an outstanding that's outstanding spider Hannah says uh, so we're gonna do mathematics and today it's an open discussion you can ask questions but we're gonna lay out a problem that Tottenham Hotspurs hey hey evil on toast how are you doing so Liverpool is playing Tottenham in Champions League wow really wait a second Champions League oh man I haven't followed European soccer for a while Champions League is all of Europe so two um, British UK teams are in the Champions League or is the Champions League the premier uh, first division thank you so much Chicho sorry to get off topic I'm excited for the math today me too man I wish I had more time to look into this and tell you the truth I probably wouldn't have a solution uh, gentle chaos uh, it, even if I looked further into it because the mathematics is intense all English final wow I didn't realize that when was the last time Martin where Champions League was all English final I don't think I like I used to follow soccer in the 80s and 90s I've never seen a Champions League I don't recall seeing a Champions League with all English final that's gonna be intense today in the UK wow I had no idea <laughs> the Italians <laughs> and the German 2008 oh I didn't follow it in the 2000s in in the 80s and 90s I can't remember when it was all English final that's cool man that's super cool you're in the bar Martin you guys are gonna be busy today you're probably busy right now 
Chelsea versus Manchester United. That's cool. Both Europa League and Champions League had all had English teams in the final. Really, England must be kicking ass right now. I gotta, I gotta start following soccer to see who the some of the top players are right now. Someone's gonna get drunk to that someone. I think the whole country's gonna be pretty tipsy. That's funny. That's funny. Should we lay down the? Well, yeah, we have game on. No kidding. Let me link you to the video that Gentle Chaos uh, put out. Okay. Now, during the last uh, math live stream, which was last week, uh, Gentle Chaos asked if he could present a problem and we could discuss it in this stream, right? And it's a spiral problem. So I'm going to, that's the video he put out. It's a short video. It's a beautiful video. Gentle Chaos, fantastic. You should be doing ASMR, physics, math, computer stuff, right? Because you got it down packed, man. You were explaining it nicely. You were gentle with it, really. And presenting a very unique problem and showing visuals and tables and flipping between the two and cleaning. Dude, I wish I had you, really. I mentioned this. I wish I had you as a physics teacher or a math teacher or a teacher when I was trying to learn stuff, right? because you made it very enjoyable okay just to give everyone a rundown this is the problem that gentle chaos was presenting right and we found some solutions online um, the algorithms if you go to gentle chaos's video uh, gentle chaos reminds me of a Ben Franklin <laughs> that's funny awesome true that eh? true that i vote you for, vote for president um what do you call it um or doing all the scientific work right so gentle chaos if you look at the description in gentle chaos's uh, video thank you he says uh gentle chaos if you look at the description of gentle chaos's video he's got a link to a table where he's created where he's put the parameters and the variables in and sort of he's using those tables to create the spirals right and if you look in the comments of that video i sort of had my initial reaction i was like oh wow that's cool blah, 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 blah. and i'll tell you what my initial thoughts were and then i did a little bit of research and i found some solutions to the problem that i was looking for and one of them was uh, just a write-up just a little story where the person said this problem came up when they were in a bar talking with someone and stuff like this and they came up with a solution and they wrote code there's code um, in java and H http whatever and there's code there to generate the solution and i looked at the code and i'm not a programmer so it would have taken me a long time to figure out what the code said okay so i looked at the code it was cool and there's different parameters that you can put in and generate your own spiral your own points right and then i found another place where it had you know someone had the same problem and the solution was provided where they had it was calculus it involved calculus and i looked at that understood some of it didn't understand a lot of it and i found some other links and i kept on going i was just getting deeper and deeper right <laughs> into it i was like okay my brain is getting fried a little bit right so that's where i'm coming from right now where gentle chaos is right now okay and in the comments of that video someone else has provided a solution a formula that the person says it'll work for what gentle chaos needs now i looked at it i don't know if it'll work or not uh gentle chaos can tell us no let us know if it works or not all of that intro said here's the problem that Gen gentle chaos is dealing with right he has a spiral okay so let's draw this here's a spiral okay now this is the center of the spiral and this could be a i don't know if it's a out uh, the solution links got blocked by youtube what they got blocked they weren't blocked for mine wait a second uh, someone just provided a, a gentle chaos someone provided a, a formula oh you know what uh, you're right youtube mark stuff as spam right like for me i've had i've had to go into spam out of proof comments because 
a lot of comments because YouTube's algorithm marks them as spam. So if you go spam, you could approve those comments uh, if they are legit solutions, right? I just saw the formula, so I might have not seen the links to the solutions. Uh, I saw the links that I posted as the comments, right? But here's the, this could be a, a, a comedian. I posted another video. Uh, there should be an area where you can approve comments. YouTube, uh, get them, uh, could get them there. Yeah, even on Toastcred, if you look into the comments in the top, so if you're looking at uh, your channel, if it's your channel, you're looking at all the comments in wherever it is, here's the comments here, right? That are posted. If you look here in the top, this is posted comments, I forget what it's called. And then in, in this part, there's spam, okay? And if you go to this tab here, it'll show you the spam comments. You should be able to approve them. Incredible video, Spider says, I agree. It was a beautiful video, right? Beautiful video. Now, here's what the problem is. There's two ways. Let's assume you're standing here. Here, let's do different colors. Right? Let's assume we're a person here. And we want to move around the circle. I'll move around the spiral, right? You just want to go around the spiral, right? And there's two ways. There's more than two ways, but there's two ways that you could do your spiral. Let me draw another spiral here. Okay, so let's do another mirror spiral here. Okay, and again, you're in the center. I should have started at the same location, I guess. Here, let's do it this way. We'll start off at the same location. There we go. That way we're consistent. All right? Same location. And this is you again. Right? And you're going to move around the spiral. St. Martin. Okay, so consider this. One way you can get this person to move around the spiral is getting the person to move equal angle from the center of the spiral. So what you could do is do this. Here's our x, y axis, right? Let's just draw a solid line. Here's our x, y axis. Right, and we did this in trig, right? What you can do is say, okay, the next location that this person takes, you could do it this way. Break up each quadrant, let's say into well, I hope you can see this is too light. Um, make it a little darker. and say okay if you're starting off here what you're going to do at every 30 degrees because this is 90 degrees right each quadrant is 90 degrees so you break this into three parts every 30 degree, or as many parts as you want we're just doing each quadrant is going to be broken into three segments right so 30 degrees a pop so what you could do is say okay every 30 degrees you do a movement. You're just gonna go, oops, I gotta put one here. This is the type of movement you're gonna do, okay? So you're doing the measurement, your next step, based on the angle that you're going, okay? So, Every angle here, if this is 30, that's 30, that's 30, your next step would be 30 degrees away, 30 degrees away, and you can do that fairly easily, right? The problem with this is the movement, each distance here is not going to be the same because the spiral is going all the way out. So it's getting bigger and bigger. I mean, you can see this visually, right? 
that distance from there to there both of those are 30 degrees but this length here is a lot more or this length here is a lot more than that length right which is basically something that so what's the problem here's the problem ready this isn't a problem this is one way you can move around the spiral right and what's going to happen is your steps are going to become wider and wider right so that's one way you can move around the spiral now what if what if you didn't want to move based on an angle where all the angles are the same which is basically a concept of similar triangles right so if you have a triangle this is something everybody's seen in I think it's presented in grade 9 grade 8 or grade 9 in high school right if you have this right so if this is let's say 30 degrees that distance gets bigger and bigger right now we're it's a curve right so these are called similar triangles similar triangles similar triangles right and so on and so forth right? that's the movement that you have here now what if the one thing you wanted to do is to make sure that each one of these links was the same right so for example if the, this link here was five you want to make sure you're only moving five so in the spiral if we draw another here let's draw a cartesian coordinate system again obviously my spiral is a little wacko right now you wanted all of these distances to be the same then you no longer can go based on the angle because what's going to happen is these things aren't going to be sitting there exactly they're going to be shifted right so the problem is this how do you because this one is easy you just do the angles you can run algorithms where you figure out where the angle is it's basically this doing a triangle and you're done right because you can do this you can just lay it out like this these are your triangles right easy peasy right and another one would be here you would go like this right and the arc would be here right this one is much harder to make sure all the distances are the same so what you're trying to do is to make sure the distance here is the same as the distance here is the same as the distance here is the same as the distance here and move around the circle and that means they're not all going to lie at the same angle okay my initial reaction was this i'm going to erase this part okay my initial reaction was this my initial thought now visually i can i can tell you what the way I would imagine it happening I don't know how to do it mathematically okay visually my first reaction was this what if you can take a line take the spiral roll it out right the distance of it right cut this line into equal parts whatever distance you want let's assume this was your x the x distance right so take a line whatever the length of the spiral you need cut it into equal parts and then wrap it around your spiral right so just imagine taking this cutting in equal equal parts putting one end here and just wrapping around it right now how do you do that mathematically i don't know right i don't know how you would wrap around the spiral uh racer kill there parametalization is going to look something like uh, t cos at t cos a sine at that's the coordinates for some constant a okay I, I i have no idea if that's true or not but i know racer kill is better at mathematics than i am right higher level i'm good at high school math and elementary school math 
above that, we got some people here that are really good at it. Right. That's why we're presenting the problem. So that's one way you could do it. Okay. I I don't know if that's an efficient way of doing it. Where is T is the parameter? T uh where t is the parameter so t would be the parameter you're talking what the distance is you want between them for some constant a or is a your distance there oh man did i miss something oh mask of raven you're good at math How, mask of raven you're good at math agreed uh let us know and i'll run you through the whole thing it's speedy gonzalez wise here's the video that we're talking about by the way mask of raven Boop. okay this is the problem presented by gentle chaos no a is just some constant it could be just one oh so where are we getting a from racer kill where's the a coming from and mask of raven basically what we want to do quick problem we want to have a spiral but what we want to do is move around the spiral equal distance along the spiral so we can't base it on an angle it has to be some kind of algorithm that calculates the arc length of the spiral to move along right so my first idea was take a straight line cut it into equal parts and wrap it around the spiral and here's the other thing that i thought right i don't think that's viable i, I really don't know this sounds like star trek speaking to me and here's here's the other thing that i thought what if let's zoom into this area right so let's take this area here let's take these three points and zoom into them right i've done like i, I went to the beach where i do a lot of thinking and i i took some notes and laid it laid down the problem and did this thing <laughs> so i'm going to show you what i think uh, the, the what i thought and the problem with what i thought right uh you can choose a as you want different a changes the shape somewhat would that be the shape of the spiral or the distance of the movement okay and that is basically trigonometry what uh, uh racer kill has presented right so let's zoom into this area i'll show you what uh could be related right so we got three points here right let's take this down this this and this what i thought was this now this doesn't work when you're close in because the spiral is tighter faster way would make it spin faster okay so take a look at this what if what if i mean larger a lar faster a larger a. so my thought was this and i wrote this down here let me go to the and the discussion was presented in this in uh, in our math folder okay da, 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 da. for me the first thing this is what i thought about this is what i wrote i'll read this to you because i actually had to say it a couple of times before here's a question that i have which may send us on the right track i haven't looked into the answer yet is the angle from the tangent on a point on the spiral going to be the same from one point to the next through the spiral if so then we should be able to create the spiral with equal distance distance between the points uh, for as many rotations as you want I think okay that's me trying to explain it in as few words as possible but here's a visual of it right what if the tangent you take the tangent for this line you take the tangent for this line you take the tangent for this line oh that's not a tangent let me draw the tangents properly jeez louise i want to draw a tangent here right because that's a tangent and here's a tangent here right so my idea was this the way i was thinking about this if you take a tangent on a point right to this point okay is this angle if you draw a straight line to this point is this angle theta going to be the same as the tangent to this point 
is this guy also going to be theta? If that's theta one, that's theta one. If that's the case, then it'll be quite easy to figure out the angles and get the x, y coordinates for the next point because you're going the same theta and the same radius, right? Now this will work as the spiral gets bigger. It will approximate it closely because the arc on the spiral is getting wider and wider, I guess, the spin on it, right? But when you get closer here, the tangent's not going to work because the tangent from here and the tangent from here and the tangent from there, I don't think we're going to be, uh, they're going to have the same length, uh, the, the same uh, magnitude. Okay, Lord, how are you doing? I leave for 10 minutes and then all of a sudden you have a world drawing all this. Not if the distance between the points is the same. So if the distance between the points is the same, it's not going to work because the spiral here is tighter, right? Like if I drew this properly, if we zoom into this area, imagine if the spiral was really big. Eventually the angle would be close to zero. Yeah, eventually you're just going, this, this angle would come tighter and tighter and all you're doing is just doing the same distance. Right? Very good, Chicho. The election in Belgium were really controversial. <laughs> Lord, we're talking werewolves here, talking Belgium elections. Imagine this. Yeah, so um, that's where I am at right now. I looked at some other stuff, uh, but the mathematics was too much for me. I couldn't figure out how they went ahead about doing this. I looked at uh, angular momentum, uh, angular uh, motion, and stuff like this. The angle gets smaller every time the angle gets smaller every time exactly right which isn't a solution for the spiral close to the center it's not going to work because the i don't know what the error would be what the difference would be between theta one here and theta two here right i'm assuming the error on it is fairly large the the difference right but as you get further and further out this theta is going to equal that theta right or approximately equal it the problem is really imprecise if you don't have a parametalization of the spiral what is paramet parametalization of the spiral i don't know what that really means tell you the truth Par i'm looking up parametalization now because this problem is really parametalization is the process of finding parametric equations of a curve a surface or more generally a manifold or a variety defined by implicit equation the inverse so basically finding the function for the the equation right for the for the curve right so with this method you would have to have this function f of x and it wouldn't be a function it's a relationship right like you said parametalization of the spiral i guess that's the proper terminology for it i'm not 100 sure like fibonacci it looks a little bit like fibonacci yeah but not so uh, right so you would have to be able to present the spiral I don't want to say function because it's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test as a relationship. You have to have some kind of equation for it. And then you could take the tangents. And then from there, you're pretty much set, I think. No, it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? So for a given X point for this X value, a function basically means for a given X, you can only have one Y. But for this X, we have one, two, three, four different Y's, the way I've drawn it. And that's called a relationship. It's not a, it's not a function. Okay, let's stick to the curves. Um, it's how you get from a parameter T to the point on the curve. How you get from parameter P to a point on a curve. So essentially you have a function going from an interval 
to a curve. You have a function going from an interval to a curve. Fails vertical line test, fails vertical line test. Like I said, it's going to be t cos t, t sine a t. Okay. So racer, uh, uh, sorry, a gentle chaos. Uh, racer kill is stating this where t was your parameter and a was your whatever constant you had if i recall correctly yeah for some constant a where t is the parameter i should yeah, Chris, Chris, i should have paid more attention math class. i should have paid more attention in math class think how that looks as t goes from zero to five for example so for example uh when you say t is a parameter uh race to kill what parameter are we changing with the spiral it's some kind of parameter but what parameter are we changing so if it's a parameter would it be a function we change t but what is t like what what does t define right so for example for for a circle right the radius really decides everything right so if you change r you change the size of the circle how does that relate visually to the spiral we've drawn t varies for sure but how so for example if t is zero what happens to our spiral if t is five what happens to our t is from some interval say zero to ten okay so what would a t of zero equal and what would a t of 10 equal is t t of zero okay for every t in an interval you get a point for every t in the interval you get a point here okay so these would be here let me erase this because if you remember trigonometry grab a darker one x y and you can consider your x-axis to be cos theta and your y-axis to be sine theta right and racer kill is mentioning would give you the point zero zero t1 gives you the point if a is one so that's the next point is that true so if we're doing the spiral, let's do the spiral the same way we did here. Oh, I want to do it black. So it would be right. and what we're saying is, or what's being said here is this, a point on the graph would have the coordinates x and y, right? But x is cos theta and y is sine theta, right? For just a simple circle. But based on what Racer Kill is saying, the point is really t cos a um, a theta is a theta we're saying t is that the way we wrote it oh a t a t and uh, t sine of a t And as you change t you change the location on the spiral and if t is zero you're at zero zero you're here that's what racer kill is saying uh, one way to view parameterize para para meterization maybe someone would correct me if i'm wrong is as a similar animal to change uh, is 
as a similar animal to change of variables of which u substitution is an example the difference is that uh, in changes of variables you have the same number of variables before and after the change whereas in parameterization you end up with fewer variables than you started with you end up with fewer variables than you started with no it's not the points you're talking about but it is points on the spiral oh so it doesn't give us the points that we want the movements for but it's the points on the spiral and once you find the points on the spiral then you can calculate the distance between the points based on the curve is that correct racer kill so what you're doing this function this is well i don't want to keep on calling the function but it's not a function this here gives you the points on the spiral and once you find the points on the spiral you can calculate the distance between the points on the curve okay okay so there's a, it's a two-step process you need to take your curve and i mean basically taking something that's uh infinite and reducing it down to point form right infinite number of points reduce it down to points and then find the distance between them uh, i forget what the term is for it to make it discrete i guess it's not really discrete because they don't have to be discrete holy i need to learn trigonometry i understand almost zero but it's interesting yeah i just know the foundation of sort of what's going on but not as uh uh you have predicted correctly chicho we have double capacity this evening i need to go and lead the troops okay enjoy the game martin i hope i hope uh, a uk team wins <laughs> which they will <laughs> on british european chefs can you spiral in the other way for your uh australian fear <laughs> sure we go right okay racer kill that uh so basically we're defining the spiral first before we can even get into making the movements equal distance i don't know if that helps you out uh, uh gentle chaos hey guys i just turned in are you all finding equal distant points on a spiral or something else yeah odd make that's exactly what we're trying to do <laughs> collapse the limit collapse the limit yeah okay so wait what's the confusion with uh para i gotta keep on pronouncing this parametization uh i don't think we're confused about it now i think we understand that parametization is taking a curve and representing it as points right well if you don't have a proper definition of the spiral how could uh even solve i uh, true that i'm assuming i always i always work with functions so i was i keep on thinking this as the spiral of a function and then from a function you can take the tangent i'm just assuming because my math isn't powerful enough that there is an equation to represent the spiral okay and all you would have to do is uh find the tangent to the points but that's not going to work when you get close to it that's where i got stuck right uh, i think this is called parametizing curve by arc length okay that's what it's called sounds legit to me odd mick if you haven't seen this is the problem that uh, i'm going to present uh, here oops i gotta find the video again i copied parameter uh, parametization uh, copy link location this should be the video that was presented by gentle chaos the solution of the problem would be that this is not a arc link parametrization the solution of the problem would be that so the solution of the problem would be i think this is called parametrizing the curve by arc length so the solution would be parametrizing the curve by arc length so that would be the solution would be the distance between these points but first thing you would have to do is 
parametize the curve right so you would have to define your curve which is from what i understand that's what it's really saying you would have to define your curve gentle chaos what a problem you gave us Oof. by the way gentle chaos why did you want to do this i looked this up and i couldn't believe uh, the archimedean spiral how to generate the archimedean spiral is super cool of how to do it and then i kept on going down the rabbit hole how it's used and stuff is used for condensers air condensers and for clocks and stuff like this uh, i'm not sure i'm pretty sure there's tons of applications for this going the same distance along the curve uh, but i'm not sure what gentle chaos was using it for and as far as i know this is as deep as i could go with it like i really can't go any deeper than this with it um, arc length parametization means that you have a curve where the distance along the curve is equal to the distance uh distance in, in distance in parameter and i really don't even fully understand what that means for example cos t sine t is an arc length parametrization of a circle okay is that what it's called so the coordinate this is the parametrization of a circle i have no idea <laughs> it was for an old idea <laughs> schools gentle chaos what a fantastic way to spend your time right just call think of a problem try to solve for it that's good exercise that's like that's like that's phenomenal gentle chaos i love it right so basically uh, racer kill is saying what we talked about i didn't know this when i created the trip videos where we talked about this stuff that if we draw a circle if we draw a circle as soon as you say that this is the point here because this is x and y and again x is cos y is sine on a unit circle then cos theta and sine theta are parametalizing the circle i like applying this to the milky way yeah milky way 100 percent where are we we're on the outskirts of the milky way uh racer code is that not equivalent to saying that the points are equally spaced along the curve which is our result uh, no because the distance between the points along the curve is different from the distance between the points yeah because the distance between the points if we do it here so the next point would be here the distance between the points would be that but the arc length is an approximation for the arc length would be this right so the arc length is greater than the distance between the points fresh kiwi thank you for the prime subscribe that's cool for example the distance between one zero and a negative one and zero and one and zero is two but their distance between each other along the circle is pi yeah and that's what racer kill is mentioning is this the distance between one and zero here and here on a unit circle uh, is two because if you have an arc length or if you have a radius of one then that's one and that's one right so that distance is equal to two but the arc length this distance is pi so this is 3.14 dot 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 right so if the that's the maximum would be i guess well would the maximum be that i guess you could put the points right beside each other and distance could almost be two pi right but that's a really good example odd mick okay so i've actually done something like this before you have nice you have the paramatization 
let's ju let's just assume something something xt is equal to rt cos t yt is equal to rt sine t what you would what you want to do is find the line integral between any two points on the spiral say t and t prime or t theta then you have to try and find an algebraic solution to the integral which doesn't work but you can't get a good approximation which should be fine since gentle chaos does physics i can link a stack overflow answer to it in this course dude Odnik, thank you uh gentle chaos Odnik, some kind of stack overflow thing yes sir. our example was concerned with distance along a curve though uh, but this is a curve uh, dice power this is a curve right if you if we take this all right let's assume we're taking this okay let's use a different color let's assume we're taking these two points if you extend these two points down right to a central point then what you have here if you extend this it's a larger circle right well what happens if you take these points and put them across each other you have exactly that guy right so it is a curve it's just an exaggerated curve are we talking about equal distance along the curve or equal distance equal distance along the curve was concerned with with distance along the curve though yeah equal distance between the points i didn't realize it was this hard to do this <laughs> really i looked at some of the stuff i i kept on clicking 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 and you would have integration symbols coming in from the limits of this to this and doing this and this this reminds me of my time at ninth grade studying math to a certain degree it's just been a long time so i don't remember much myself yeah and you definitely need more than grade nine mathematics to do this i watched the video and i'm somewhat confused as to what we're trying to do we're trying to go along the spiral but equal arc length along the spiral so for example if you could you know if you think about it as a line if you think about it as a line you want to make sure your steps are the same distance right and then just imagine taking that line and wrapping it around a previously known or graphed spiral so you would take this guy and go boop, lay it down and that would assure that the distance between your points was the same along the arc length right like for me that's that's the way i visualize it and that seems simple enough oh you have a i guess that's what it's called you're paramat paramatizing the curve and then taking a line that is equal distance and wrapping it around the curve how to do that mathematically in a spreadsheet right great problem though good for the brain this forced me to look at some stuff that I had looked at at university that I hadn't even like I probably didn't even understand them when I looked at the stuff let alone 30 years later and we want a parametric form that produces a spiral like that basically I think so yeah I had a sadistic multi-variable calc teacher assigned something like this as extra credit in undergrad i didn't really solve it but i fully utilized the power of the internet nice nice yeah i don't i can't remember if we ever did anything like this in math and we did some crazy stuff in undergrad some of the problems were like oh my god like it hurts to think about it right but i don't think i ever encountered any problems like this you get the arc length of a param parametric curve x y 
by the integral of square root that that what you just uh, typed in there uh, racer kill that's one of the things I saw in uh, one of the uh, one of the links that I followed and it took me to certain math forms right where's the derivative yeah yeah and I haven't done calculus for so long I sort of you know skimmed through it read the formulas and I didn't spend too much time trying to connect up the parameters and the formulas to the different things you can write this in Cartesian coordinates it is just easier to parametize it okay. one day I'll go back to doing studying math again maybe maybe once we make enough content for elementary and high school math we'll start taking calculus again <laughs> cool I think that's as far as we can take it I believe so anyway uh, it's weird certain problems uh, that's a thing with mathematics or physics or science really certain things seem to at, at first glance they should seem easy but then when you look at it you try to define it and prove it and come up with a solution they become much harder right look for example one of the things that blew my mind way way back in the day I can't remember when I, when I looked into this or studied this is uh, taking a global map how many different colors do you need to be able to make sure no country is touching another country on a map with the same color and the answer is four and people have known this for a long time but the proof of this hasn't wasn't done until like 50 years ago or 80 years ago or something like this calc 3 is really neat a lot of the interesting stuff with physics goes to this level oh really i went for me uh the highest level math i went was it calc 3 or calc i can't remember what it was uh, but i took uh, calculus all the way to the end of second year calculus I didn't go to third year calculus I went to third year uh, statistics but I didn't go to third year calculus because I was getting my minor in mathematics not a major in mathematics my pleasure gentle chaos I'm sorry if I don't have but a lot of people provide solutions for this and I think it was odd Mick, that said he's gonna provide some stuff in the in discord so I hope it helps you out I looked at your tables uh, and I try to figure out how you approximated the, the first column in your third sheet where you're approximating the distance that you were going to 720 where you talked about the acceleration I couldn't figure it out um, what's super cool super cool it's just good exercise talking about this and thinking about this and seeing how this relates to our unit circle really trigonometry that that's the basis of all this right that's the basis of all this thank you gentle chaos for putting the problem for us to look at uh, and thank you everyone for providing solutions for this or the next step well here's a here's another fun problem here's another fun problem <laughs> is this from your sadistic calc 3 teacher <laughs> professor <laughs> was there a moment in your life when you needed to understand understand fourth dimension I've uh, had that few times only to feel it's beyond my skill to understand uh, cyber fan fourth dimension for the way I perceive it is time time is the fourth dimension and yes the fourth dimension was extremely hard to get a handle on it okay but for me I was able to get a handle on the fourth dimension through the realm of entheogens okay and then once I did that to get a visual to get a feel for what it was and then I understood it on a mathematical level to a certain degree to my level anyway to my satisfaction and all of a sudden it just everything fell into place where I read Einstein's paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies and I finally understood why we can travel at the speed of light because we got a division by zero in the equations and the mathematics so for me the fourth dimension is time 
and for everyone really the fourth dimension is time this problem is pretty crazy it's pretty crazy super cool though like just imagine uh, without the internet without technology sitting there with candlelight trying to come up with a solution to this and it would have to be visual you would have to have drawn all this stuff out and connect things and this that's the way the mathematics was done every even integer greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes every even integer greater than two if you can find either a proof or counterexample, you'd be the most famous person in mathematics. Yeah. Some of the most simplest statements are the hardest proofs in existence, right? Every even, every even integer greater than two can be expressed as a sum of two primes. Let's present that. Okay. We're going to take all this down now, gang. Fun. <laughs> I was for me I was nervous doing this by the way just letting you know because I thought there would be an easy solution to this and I hadn't come up with one before the stream so I'm like oh my god I couldn't even find a solution to this so I'm glad to find out that it's not an easy solution Here's a proof that needs to be found out. And as Odmik says, you'd be one of the most famous people in mathematics if you could prove this. And it's this, right? So let's write integers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, etc. Right? Well, these are natural numbers, but let's call them integers. Okay. So every even integer greater than two, so it is even integer greater than two. Well, I've written down the integers. So even we're talking about 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on and so forth, right? The problem is this, or the proof we're looking for is this. Prove that every even integer, every even number, counting number, can be written, uh, let me say this correctly, uh, can be expressed as a sum of two primes, right? So take 10, for example. 10 you can write down as 7 plus 3 that's the sum of two primes 12 you can write down as uh, 9 plus 3 is 12 7 plus 3 is 10 and so on and so forth right so no matter what even integer you have as a sum of two primes is that correct as a sum of two primes so if you go to let's say 48 what can we write 48 as i don't know uh 50 well it's got to be a sum so you can't subtract if you could do subtraction you could go is 51 a prime i don't think 51 is a prime let me go to prime numbers that i know by the top of my head let's check it out so prime numbers we know are 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 right and then you got 23 20 9 31 uh, and these are called double primes they appear together double primes and whatnot so if we just add these guys let's go 19 plus 17 6 1 uh, what? 7 16 <laughs> 36 so 36 you can write down as 19 plus 17 right and so on and so forth if you can prove that this is true for all even integers greater than 2 You'd be one of the most famous mathematicians in the world. And the odds are you probably win like a million dollars because there's prizes for certain proofs, right? You can just let the math take you, take you there. Best way to think about it physically is where three directions and then use colors. This is for the map, uh, Mask of Raven. I use simple cube uh, thing, but now when uh, think of it, both hints give me much better understanding that, uh, da, 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 that I went to complex. You use the whole board. I use the whole board. 
I sort of study higher dimensional spaces for my PhD in my qualifying exams don't kill me don't do it it hurts math is masochism <laughs> it's called the Goldbach conjecture it was first stated in 1742 it's still unsolved and we have even sniff sniff to prove so wait a second is this the map one Odnick? uh cyber you can just let the math take you there best way to think about it physically is with the three directions and then using color oh, i lost it could be false oh 17 plus 31 that's right equals 48 so 48 would be 17 plus 31 cool <laughs> my prime numbers go to 31 and 37 37 and i think 41 right yeah i'm having trouble with this problem find a quotient and the remainder if that is divided by that i'm fine dividing by x but when plus two sure we can do that add it to it just uh read on polynomial division and nine is in prime no nine is not prime uh no the global block conjecture is the problem i told you guys about about integers oh so this is so there was someone that came up with the proof they already killed the proof the proof is invalid odd nick really that's cool let's do long division and we can do synthetic division on that too right has the gold conjecture been proven yet? Rest in peace. I was talking about four dimensions. You can visualize the fourth dimension as color. Oh, okay. Where just like a 3D object can't go through another coordinate, red 4D objects wouldn't go through red 4D objects. No, nope. hasn't either. Cool. So we got a long division here of this. Uh, x plus two and you have uh, what have we got three x to the power of five still no idea what a food would even look like yet i had fun trying for a bit though <laughs> nice x to the power of five three x to the power of five uh plus six x squared plus six x squared and plus seven plus seven we can do long division on this right so the one thing you have to ask yourself constantly and by the way i've got a whole playlist on long divisions for here let me find you a link because we're going to go through it quick okay chicho long division videos polynomial long division let's see if we got one. Oh my god i got one right there there and you know what i'm just going to give you the search there's a whole bunch here that we've done okay and i do a whole series if you go to language of mathematics uh series 3a and 3b lays it all out for you these problems were actually fun for me for some reason usually with proofs and stuff no one actually imagines four dimensions mathematicians usually use metrics it's ironically one of the most non-visual fields in mathematics <laughs> so take a look at that and that's the problem with mathematics really you have to be able to visualize it for me anyway there are people that i know that can do it or have known they can do stuff without visualizing it they just rely on the algebra it's like wow so what you ask yourself is this because math is cool get hyped give your life to the math gods the only demand demand blood sacrifice <laughs> so you always ask yourself what do you multiply x by to give you 3x to the power of 5 right and that becomes 3x to the power of 4 right and then you multiply this and this by it right so 3x to the power of 4 is 3x to the power of 5 3x to the power of 5 times 2 is plus 6x to the power of 4 okay 
Now what you have to do, bless her for my sake, let me grab my firstborn son real quick. Usually you gotta sacrifice your own sanity to mathematics, right? So what you gotta do now is subtract this from that, right? And I like adding. So all I do is multiply this by negative one. So it just changed the sign and I add them. So this kills this. Now you can't subtract x to the power of four from x squared. They're different powers, right? So all you do, you put this down first, the highest power first, negative six x to the power of four, and then you put down the rest, right? And remember, this is x squared, so there's an x cubed there as well. If you want to save a, put a placeholder so you don't get confused, you could put down plus zero x cubed plus six x squared plus seven, right? Do it sequentially, okay? Next thing you ask yourself is, what do you multiply x by to give you negative six x to the power of four? That's negative six x cubed. So this multiplies this and this. So this becomes negative six x to the power of four minus 12 x uh, cubed, right? Multiply by negative one, add. So I change the signs and add them. This kills this. This becomes 12 x cubed plus six x squared plus seven. What do you multiply x by to give you 12 x cubed? 12 x squared plus 12 x squared. So that's 12 x cubed plus 24, oops, 24 x squared. Change the signs and add them. This kills this. This becomes negative 18 x squared plus seven. What do you multiply x by to give you negative 18 x squared? You multiply by negative 18 x minus 18 x. So that's negative 18 x squared minus 36 x. Change the signs and add them. This kills this. This becomes 36x plus 7. What do you multiply x by to give you 36x? 36. So plus 36, you get 36x plus 72. Change the size and add them, you get negative 70. So your division statement would be this if you're doing a division statement. You would go 3x to the power of 5 plus 6x squared plus 7 divided by x plus 2 is equal to this 3x to the power of 4 minus 6x cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x plus 36 plus negative 70 or minus 70 over x plus 2. All right. You could do this through synthetic division as well. I'm just going to get cap caught up with chat. stuff no one actually imagines that uh because math is cool get hype get the sacrifice cool uh yeah best thing to do yeah right that one visual for 4d is to use cube within a cube that loops okay you kid but there are people who would slaughter their families for solutions for famous problems like Riemann's hypothesis. Wasn't Riemann's hypothesis? Uh, hasn't that odd make? I guess it hasn't been proven. I thought it was for some reason. I bet Andrew Wells can solve it. Yeah, but those visualizations aren't usually substantial enough to find new interesting things. Most work is done by imaginary imagining analogies between 3d and 2d space and thinking how those change between 4d and 3d really that's cool agreed wills probably can't at this point he's old and Fermat probably took enough effort for a life okay i gotta look up andrew wills i think i know who that is but i gotta see his face before i know I love these discussions. I'm learning so much from these things. Fantastic. Oh yeah, this guy, <laughs> Andrew Wills. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm guessing there's only so much brain power left after you do certain things, right? You're gonna bet on mathematicians. Do so with people like Terence Tao or Peter Schultz. We need Terence for the 
twin prime conjecture. I gotta look up Terrace. Terrace. Tau. 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 Terrace. Tau. Oh, wow. This guy. He's that powerful. His mathematics. Really, gang? I didn't know. I didn't know. He's that powerful. That's cool. Peter Schultz. I gotta look at Peter Schultz. Peter Schultz. Wow. Youngins. Youngin mathematicians. Awesome. Fresh blood. RH has not been proven. I would have thrown a party. Really? Masco Raven. It hasn't been Riemann's hypothesis. That's a thank you. Very helpful. I uh, have also bookmarked some of your long division and synthetic division videos. My pleasure, man. I hope you you enjoy. I took a fair bit of time doing this because this really hurts a lot of people uh, when it comes to mathematics in high school. It takes people out of the game. And I, I made some stuff initially when I started making math videos, uh, specifically tackling stuff that people had a hard time with because I wanted to make sure that if people were hitting obstacles, they could go beyond, right? A weaker version of uh, twin prime construction is proven. That's fair. But he does a lot of work and, and analysis too. Dude is insane. Wish I could have his kids. <laughs> awesome. Which guy is this? Is this the terrorist guy or the other guy? That's awesome. What fun. Wish his kiddos. In theoretical physics, you often go beyond three to four dimensions. Tao has done quite a bit over many disciplines. Pretty rare, really that's cool yeah sort of but only string theory and other high energy stuff Terran style has math power levels past whatever high number you can think of really odd man i gotta look this guy up sub chicho jacob how are you doing how's life it's proven that there exists infinitely many pairs of primes with difference at most 246 really Oh, pairs of primes at most 246 what is it's proven that there exists infinitely many pairs of primes with differences at the most of 246 really oh wow the bound used to be 7 million yeah and that was proven by someone who used to work at subways really that is trippy that's cool oh terrester absolute madman serious i gotta check this guy out i don't know this guy no nah, man have you ever looked at super symmetry super symmetry i looked at stuff a while ago when i was looking at the string uh, string theory the plast runge lens is where it's at i'm in terrace but it's also totally Mary Peter Schultz. <laughs> who, do you, who do you attribute it to? It was proven to uh, by Yitang Zhang, uh, but his bound was much larger than 246. Dice power. Have you posted an explanation of the trick identity? Uh, a cos theta plus b cos theta equals c cos theta minus five no i haven't done that yet dice power the identity stuff i'm going to be doing as uh, the second part of trigonometry the videos we've put out i i paused not paused i i put out a set of videos on trigonometry and i ended it that first phase at a point where you could branch off into trick functions and trig identities so I need to create those branches. I haven't done those yet, unfortunately. Wow. I'm going at 420 speed, brother. I'm doing things that I love and things that I 
well, I'm doing things that I love and I love many things. So I go a little slow on creating specific content, right? A lot of people that have been following my work for the math, uh, for the comic book readings are like, are you ever going to finish off series four? I'm like, yeah, at some point we will. Yeah, I have. Mirror symmetry is part of string theory and high energy physics. Have you always been good at math? I'm not sure who that's towards. For me, uh, no. I, 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 like my math, my math power is much below the math power of some of the people talking on chat right now right for me uh what i love is data uh, i love functions as well i love high school math but i love large data sets and what you can do with large data sets and what they give you um, so for me my mathematics is pattern recognition and i'm really good at pattern recognition just intuitively i don't know how that came to be uh it's just I think it's a human innate ability we're pattern recognition machines and I think I just at some point when I was a kid I just looked at patterns everywhere so I just intuitively got into it my math ability to recognize patterns is not as powerful as I would have liked it to be uh, if the question was for me still noob student rare popo have you looked into the seven millennial challenges? The only one solved is the point point care conjecture by Gregory Perelman, a 400 page proof. He didn't accept the 1 million prize. He felt the work was really unprofessional. Is this the Russian guy, Jacob, that he lives in a one bedroom apartment and he just did the stuff and he didn't take the $1 million? nope had a bad time until i learned some proofs i generally think i'm bad at math still but i guess my i'm actually not odd mick you're not bad at math but our abilities are to our own standards right like people say i'm really good at math i'm not and odd mick his math is so much more powerful than mine and he still thinks he's not good at math right <laughs> okay do you do uh oh chemistry math uh, questions i used to chatty like i i dealt with uh chemistry before 20 years ago i was teaching a little bit of it uh, but i haven't done for a very very long time so i can't remember most of chemistry uh there's a lot of geometry associated with chemistry but a lot of chemistry that i was dealing with was just balancing equations uh for my students like trying to explain that to them and that's just fractions that was easy uh, i believe the thought that proof was enough of a prize for him and he wasn't going uh doing it for the money yeah yeah for the love of it it was directed towards all the super smart people in this stream it's really i was sure it was a failure on the oryx part but i guess not uh Perlman is kind of a sad case he felt betrayed by the math community it's too bad oh really that's unfortunate I want to look at the, I want to make sure this is the same person I'm thinking about. Perlman Math. Is this the Russian guy? Yeah, this guy. This guy I really liked, man. Grigor Perlman. Oh, did he get burnt? I'm sorry to hear that. I, I looked into this guy many years ago. That's unfortunate. Is this the same guy I looked at before? No, this is a different guy. That's unfortunate. Mm. Chicho, if you love data, you must have read into the development of big data. Amazing stuff. It's what I hope to go into later in my life. Uh, you're talking about like just through technology, like with metadata and data and just processing data for sure. Uh, I, if if these corporations, if uh, weren't so evil I might have gone that direction but I found most of these corporations that are dealing with big data to be completely uh, there's no morality there's no they're not they're evil so I just didn't go in that direction 
Intrepid, how are you doing? How's your weekend been so far? Pretty good, brother. Pretty good. I got uh, students in panic mode wanting to meet up. So I'm doing uh, a lot of running around. Yeah, that's him, the Russian guy. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know what? This world is too brutal for many amazing people. I've known some of them personally, and I know some of them uh, historically. And this world is brutal for a lot of people. And I hope uh, we're able to improve this world so that those among us who are brilliant, who are sensitive, uh, who have a huge amount to contribute to our society that just can't deal with the way society is uh, to shine, right? Actually, he didn't accept it because he felt another person had contributed just as much to the solution. So there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy between why he didn't accept it. Could you talk about uh, strategies to factoring higher degree polynomials? Uh, it's, uh, it's, you should do uh, the strategies are this uh, mask of raven here. So if you have a polynomial, let me move this over. Here, well, let me let me just quickly catch up with chat if I can. Uh, is that so? I must have done that. Oh, real quick, for what it's worth, I'm a girl. Odd, oh, make you're a girl. I figured you want to have few, you want to have mathematicians' children. <laughs> not a dude. Doesn't matter. But I know something. Not knowing any female mathematicians except for Miriam. Uh, Mary Kazi, my I gotta look that up. I gotta look up your hero, Mick. My hero uh, discour discouraged me at times, so I should clarify in forum and stuff. Let's check it out. If I was a female, I wouldn't mind having some crazy mathematician kids as well. <laughs> For the record, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is an Iranian mathematician, really, and a professor of mathematics at Stanford University. Her research topics include Tech Muller theory, hyperbolic geometry, uh, er, uh, ergodic theory, and uh, symplectic geometry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The internet is one giant data set of one and zeros. Yeah, hopefully, it's soon to be quantum just joining here hi chicho hello curious Devin. how are you doing we have some polynomials going here yeah we have some polynomials and a lot more unfortunately that she died so young oh, what she died what she died she's dead no <gasps> died in 2000 how old was she oh no i gotta do it with my fingers 87 40 years old oh that's unfortunate god dang it just go ahead sad how these uh, stereotypes still exist huh that you have to clarify that you're female nice to chat with you yeah my boyfriend is going going into ai and stuff i thought about it but i am also worried about ethics yeah yeah i cared i cried for hours when she died what a challenge oh. my older brother is developing the super niche and technical field in AI he's uh, turning 25 next year and he's getting a PhD cool it's not a big deal it's just that I think it's important to clarify yeah for sure oh I really want he's looking at oh, what he's looking at oh She's really cool. Actually, the only Iran mathematician to win the field medal, really. And the first female to win the field medal. Awesome. Pippa Hands feels medal. Oops. X. I meant to convey with the uh, have no uh, clues of niche definition. If you like, I can link his recent research paper on chat. So take a look at the polynomials. This is the way you do higher, higher order polynomials. F of X is equal to a x to whatever power you want all the way to a constant plus c okay 
So if you're doing it manually, what you're looking for, manual, we're just talking manual here, right? If you're doing manual, then the first ones you should try are gonna be this. The possible factors of this, let's call them X, are gonna be the possible factors of this divided by possible factors of this. So factors of C divided by factors of A. The first one is always going to be one or negative one, okay? So for example, let's do this. Um, I don't know, two, let's go three, x to the power of 5 plus 7x squared plus um, 12, right? So possible factors of this that you can do manually would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Those are all the possible factors of 12, divided by possible factors of 3, which is plus or minus 1, and I should put commas between these plus and minus three, right? So you should always start off with one. And the way you can do it is, you can just punch in, find f of one, right? Now, if you're given a polynomial like this, these are all positive. So if you put any of the positive numbers here, you're not gonna, it's not gonna equal zero because what you're doing here, you're asking yourself what f of, f of one is. Basically, you're asking yourself, what's y when x is 1? So all you got to do is just punch it in here. 1 to the power of 5 plus 7, 1 squared plus 12, right? Well, 1 to the power of 5, 1, one squared is just 1. So this becomes 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 12 is 22. So when x is 1, y is 22 for this function. So none of the positives are going to work. Let's try a negative. Now, I don't even know if there's a factor for this that we can find manually, right? I'm just giving you an example. Negative 1 to the power of 5 plus 7 negative 1 squared plus 12. Negative 1 squared is 1, so that's just 7. Negative 1 to the power of 5 is negative, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, right? So negative 3 plus 7 is 4. 4 plus 12 is 16, right? So when x is negative 1, y is 16. It's not a factor because it's not on the x-axis. And if you want to know what this looks like, this is to the power of 5. It's got a positive thing in the front here. So we know it opens up like this. We just don't know where the x-intercepts are. There's going to be at least one, right? Because this thing can go like this. Like it needs to cross the x-axis at least once, right? So you can do this and find one that works and then use synthetic division on it. And if you do uh, Chicho uh, synthetic division in search, there's a whole bunch of videos we have where we go through doing factoring polynomials like this, okay? Uh, but that's just the general gist of how you go about doing that. Either if you like, like, is it, da, 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 da. I normally understand the few first few sentences of a research paper and then kind of skim over the rest and ah, okay, let me find it. Me too. I usually just uh, read the abstract and pretend to know the rest. Only biology papers. Can I even guess as to what they're getting at? Damn, the paper can only be accessed by having it account on the website the title is this local representation learning with a convolution auto encoder wow there's a fact and uh, fact of formula for the roots of third degree polynomials but it's horrendous yeah i would even third degree i would just do it this way i would do synthetic division and just find them like this and if you, there is none that you can do manually easily, just use a calculator. But usually if you're doing in high school, they, they're giving ones that work out, right? Get us access, Jacob says. <laughs> I generally think biology is the hardest undergrad major. So much memorizing, and I have no idea how people stick with it. Uh, Odmik, I agree with you. 
I biology grade 10 I couldn't go take grade 11 or grade 12 let alone undergrad just the terminology the memorization was too much for me I think if you know linguistics you'd be really good at biology because you can connect up the meaning of the words and stuff well don't ask me I switch from biomed to math nice I'm trying there used to be an unblocked version I should have saved too bad uh, Aaron uh, what's his name uh, Aaron Schwartz uh, there weren't more people like Aaron Schwartz to release all of these papers scientific papers that should be under the public domain to the public right I don't like paywalls and all these research papers that you have to subscribe to and there's gatekeepers of publishing houses that are preventing certain papers to be published I don't like it Jacob you threaten your brother at gunpoint I was GNA to a biophysicist until I took organic chem organic chem I did I've done some organic chem as well rare organic chemistry as well rare the way you're doing it only works if the polynomial has a rational root though yeah agree like this only works for rational roots right because it's manual that's why I say when I say manually uh, we're talking about rational roots for the irrational stuff this is not gonna work uh, you need you need some kind of algorithm and rational irrational roots I think they're approximations you do race or kill isn't it the non-rational roots of polynomials you're running algorithms you're approximating the solutions a very very good approximations from what I understand I haven't done it for a long time or looked into it for a long time yeah this is what you do in high school math you're doing it this way I'm trying to remember but uh, who but there is a Russian woman who was uh, starting up services to torrent research papers or something was she nice I hope so and I hope she doesn't get burned like uh, Aaron Schwartz did right suicided maybe yeah our our society needs to uh, defi definancialize everything right my solution to this stop giving money to large corporations Aaron Schwartz MIT tried to free all the knowledge behind the higher academia paywall and got looked up and got according to many got suicided right did he commit suicide maybe either way the the state the most powerful entities we know of on this planet went after him just the same way they're going after uh, Julian Assange and they go after Manning right we need to take power away from these centralized institutions in almost any way we can for me personally I refuse to work for them nah. and I do this and some other things <laughs> no I can't seem to bypass these stupid block access sites I asked them to send over a copy uh, GT GTG I got to go now but if I if it replies I'll post it uh, in next stream awesome and Jacob feel free to post it in the math forum on discord uh, okay thanks for looking into it I'm not sure what the paper is about but anyways it's Champions League final time have a fun stream guys and girls enjoy the Champions League I got soon so I can't watch it but I'll try to find something on the stream 2020 what's the 2020 referred to Moncas 2020 2020 I think there there are uh, US companies that are trying to sue her but it uh, does nothing because she's in Russia and Russia doesn't care so it won't extradite her or anything nice that's good I think 
our freedom is dependent on people in other countries releasing information for other countries and bypassing the control mechanisms of other countries so Americans can do it to UK to France to Russia and Russians can do it to you US China and all like that's what's needed my dad is huge Spurs fan so hope your team loses <laughs> I'm a Swazi C fan rooting for Liverpool though I have many Egyptian friends see you next time see you next time enjoy the game enjoy the game oh that's fair I'm Danish so my entire family is in love with Eric Erickson is he still playing wow he was around in early 2000s or late 90s I think wasn't he or it could be a different Erickson there must be so many Ericsons around crazy fun guys fun stream I don't know if Gentle Chaos is still around, but Gentle Chaos, thanks for putting out the problem for us. Oddnik, thank you for providing a lot of info. Uh, Jacob, Rare Popo, Racer Kill, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mask of Raven, I'm just scrolling up. There's a lot of people that participated here. A lot of math going on, a lot of math going on. <laughs> Fun. Christian Erickson, so much younger, I think. Christian Erickson, okay. I forget what the first name of the previous Erickson was. Yeah, I used to follow soccer religiously almost, but I stopped. Professional sports were starting to piss me off. But I love soccer and I love wrestling and I love many, 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 many sports. But in our school system here, they in the last 20 years they've taken a lot of funding from academia and put it into the athletics department right so there's a lot of kids that i'm that i work with for to teach them mathematics because they've been missing a lot of school because school pulls on um, the team for the school team they're playing they pull them out of school and they send them on tournament tournaments for a week right or just random games during the week where they're missing a lot of math and physics classes so their marks academic marks are just completely dropping uh, so that just and one of the things that convinced me that professional sports were very detrimental to the health of the academic life of citizens was in canada in the mid 2000s early 2000s it was a hockey strike so one year or canada and united states one year the nhl there were no games and during that one year some of my students that were struggling greatly right all of a sudden they didn't have they weren't watching games every night and stuff they had time to do their homework and study and that changed their lives dramatically where some of those kids maybe they were in grade eight nine or ten or something like that if that strike had not happened they would have never taken grade 11 and 12 physics and math or chemistry and a lot of those students ended up taking great uh, physics math uh, physics math and chemistry 12 and graduating going into academia instead of spending their time watching sports so that made me move away from professional sports in a big way in a big way i follow a bit of soccer but i'm mostly a hockey and baseball fan baseball is really fun to follow if you like stats lots of fun things to do yeah <laughs> baseball is basically all stats right and a lot of drinking i know people that play baseball and watch baseball there's a lot of drinking and, and a lot of stats going on in baseball you teach in america i teach in canada that's incredibly tragic not necessarily sports fault but so tragic how our culture values different things yeah yeah and the pressure they put on the kids the pr it's incredible it's incredible right it's crazy we should call it a stream gang that's a couple of hours of nice mathematics okay thank you for being here everyone thank you for participating thank you for educating me thank you for sharing information uh, thank you for the great discourse dialogue and uh, the fun times right i enjoy these very much 
I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And if you guys are watching the games, I hope the games go your way. Okay. I gamble a lot with baseball. It, it is fun, but not always lucrative. No. There's a lot of fixing games in professional sports. Bye, everyone. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you guys in the next stream.